We wanted to get back to something where we could control our day and control our outcomes. So we continued to try things that we thought fit the narrative. And so we moved into a lot with real estate, flipping, wholesaling, but again, we weren't hitting the button of where we wanted to go. So from there, transitioned into doing some small rental properties, some two and three units out of state. And that was that first step into the deep water of saying, this makes sense. I have a dream. With great power comes great responsibility. I can do this all day. Zip, don't get scared now. They may take our life, but they'll never take our freedom. Cinderella story, out of nowhere. It's in the home. That the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Welcome back to Capital Hockey. Yes, today's the day. We get to have an audio mastermind together. Welcome. This is your show. This is your audio mastermind. And thank you for bringing your human capital to this environment. So today we went out and found another great human capitalist. His name is Jason Yarusi. And if you haven't met this fella, you're going to see in a few moments when we bring him on the air, why I say it's like we're shot out of a cannon with this fella. You know, I always say if we're moving at one time speed on that podcast uh, speed ratio, he's at two times speed in real time. The guy's great. You're going to love it. Lots of talent, lots of power. Oh, and I make a joke that the story he shares where he starts in the world of restaurants, which I didn't get into with him, but I'm very proud of him because I think restaurant work is a foundation that you can build on and build tremendous wealth because of how challenging and the rewarding it can be. Very entrepreneurial, by the way. So restaurant work, he then jumps into construction. Then he leaves construction, goes into small multifamily, dominates there. Then he goes into multifamily, large scale, and then he does well there. And now he's in education and multifamily at a whole nother level. It's exciting to be around this fellow. I cannot wait to see him at the next big event. But in the meantime, join our audio mastermind. Welcome, Jason. It has been a while in the making to get the world famous Jason Yarusi on this big show. Welcome to Capital Hacking, buddy. Well, excited to be here. And as it needs to be, of course, it's been so long for us to get together. And here we are of having mic issues, all the other things that bring the podcast <laughs> and reality of life. But I'm excited to be here. It's been way too long to know each other, both have podcasts and not be able to get in front of a podcast session. So I'm ready to do this. Yeah. So for everybody, you, if you haven't met this fella yet, you're going to, as soon as you find out about Jason and his lovely wife, wife, Peely, you're going to see them all over the internet because they're really dynamic educators. But for those of us who are listening today to this audio mastermind and who don't know you yet, would you mind sharing a little background? So we can get sure. a bearing on who you are and where you live. Sure. So Jason Yarusi of Yarusi Holdings with my wife, Peely. We now live in Tennessee, was born and raised in New Jersey. Peely actually uh, grew up in Hawaii. We met in New York City over a decade ago, working in bars, restaurants. I'd opened a bar, opened a restaurant there, opened a brewery there. And oh, I'd done a number of different things in a number of different spaces. But Peely and I moved back into New Jersey after Hurricane Sandy. My dad had a family construction business, did a lot of heavy construction. And over those days, his business exploded when this when all these properties need to be lifted because that's what his business did. So we moved out to help him. Lo and behold, we knew it was something that was great to help dad, but it was never going to be that end goal for us. We wanted to get back to something where we could control our day and control our outcomes. So we continued to try things that we thought fit the narrative. And so we moved into a lot with real estate, flipping, wholesaling, but again, we weren't hitting the button of where we wanted to go. So from there, transitioned into doing some small rental properties, some two and three units out of state. And that was that first step into the deep water of saying, this makes sense. This is how we can get back to what we had done in the restaurant and bar world is be able to scale by looking at how we can make a property perform better or if it wasn't business perform better. So we sold off those little properties, dove into large multifamily and brought a 94 unit. And that was back in 2017. And that's been the first of something around maybe a 20, early 20 amount of acquisitions, a little over 2,000 units, mainly down here in the Southeast that we've now acquired since then. Wow. Okay. So at the beginning of the show, we enjoy digging in for just a moment. So I'm going to tell the story here in our listeners' mind. We'll just recap. I love it. It's a classic story of restaurant pro, mm -hmm. restaurant entrepreneur to construction, to small multi, to big multi. It happens all the time. And now, not only are you in big multi, you're one of the better educators, and you developed an entire community around what you do 
in multifamily investing. So congratulations, my friend. Thank now, you. It's been a nice offshoot because a lot of our success has been built on surrounding ourselves with other great people that were doing this successfully, right? And they were so generous to share their knowledge. And that's pretty much everything in life is that when you look at something that's in front of you here is that the more you can give back, right? That's where you can see other people have the success. Yeah. It's such a big space. We can all win this space together. And it's been one of our through lines throughout is that this doesn't be, have to be hard. We just need to know that first logical step to take. And then how can we continue to push forward to have realistic goals that can be actionable and tactical each and every day? So we started Seven Figure Multifamily a little over, about the same time we moved down to Tennessee with our mm -hmm. partner, Bill Allen and Chad King, who both live here. We are partners on a bunch of the investments as well. And the program is just for that. It's for people that want to take that next step in life, whether it's them being in a different form of real estate or just making a whole completely different change of course in their career to be able to go out there and buy, whether it be their first multifamily property or their next multifamily property. We have about something close to 75, 80 businesses that are part of the mastermind right now. And it's been tremendous to seeing people coming in there, having the mental blocks or having the, the points of, of contention from day one saying, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this or have a part. Understanding, finding the roadmap, learning the roadmap, taking action, and now crushing it, buying all kinds of properties. We had a couple guys buy a 60 and a 64 unit the other day, right? And that's a huge win just to see people take the steps and make it happen. Yeah, that's a, that, those are compelling, okay? And for those of us listening to these podcasts, we jump into these little audio masterminds, which, you know, we should trademark that audio mastermind stuff. But Love. we jump into these podcasts, and the reason these podcasts have been so influential in many people's lives, and I'm thankful for the thousands of people listening here today, is because it just introduces you and I to new people. And then we listen to their authentic personal story, which is the Eurusi story, and we say, oh, if they can do it because they took steps, I could do it if I take steps. Yeah. And I appreciate that about you. So I want to dig in a little more on both things. So your Rusi Holdings, which is a way to uh, passive investors probably reach out to you and invest with you. That's a whole mind bending experience. You know, for us at Accountable Equity, Capital Hacking has tons of people that are entrepreneurs and tons of people that are passive investors that want to get out of Wall Street and into real estate. What is your typical conversation like for someone who finds you through the internet or through one of these podcasts and says, I've never invested in anything but Wall Street, but I'm interested in learning about investing in Main Street, like what you guys do. How does that initial conversation go for you, Jason, with that going? So ultimately, it's a lot. It's a discovery session, right? Because we want to make sure that what we're offering can be beneficial to that person, right? And a lot of this is just to understand where they are and where they want to go and how real estate investing or investing in a syndication could, in fact, be beneficial to them, right? There's a lot of different reasons why real estate makes a ton of sense, especially for people who may have the majority or if not a vast amount of money in Wall Street, right? Because there's just a lot of unpredictability on all levels. However, when you can trend back to real estate, you know, you're buying a real asset, right? Something yep. that is fixed something that's going to exist. And in many lights, real estate, what we love about it is there's so many different ways to win. You, I mean, you have cash flow, appreciation, depreciation benefits, tax advantages, debt pay down, portfolio diversification, right? There's just so many different ways that you can utilize real estate to help you on your financial journey. But the big question is just to understand what is important for them. Right. So if they're looking for cash flow to potentially replace their expenses and we're working on a development project, it's probably not going to be the right thing for them at that time because the cash flow is not going to come out for a long way down the road here. However, if they're looking to take their money and put it in something that could have a very good return profile in the future based on built in appreciation, cool, that might be a great conversation. So just understanding what is important to them, why this conversation, why they want to make this conversation. Have they invested in real estate before? What did they like? What didn't they like? And what can be the main goals that we left this conversation. What would be the main goals that you're trying to accomplish in the short term, six to 12 months, and the long term, two, three, four, five years? Yep. I imagine the conversation also includes a lot of getting to know the sponsors and getting to know you right. and your philosophy of how you're going to manage the property. I mean, it seems to me if you're listening today and you love this whole idea that people have projects that are not in Wall Street, but that produce yield, meaning annual income, for some projects and long-term appreciation, it could be like an eye opener for you because so in general, you and I grew up, Jason, we thought Wall Street was the only, I did, I thought Wall Street was the only investment. I remember being a kid thinking yeah. someday maybe I'll invest in Wall Street. Actually, I tried to do it as a kid. That was my first, I asked for stock 
on my 12th birthday. I have no idea why. Must have been watching a show on PBS or something. They're like, you need to earn stock. And the best time to buy it is now. Sell, buy low, sell high. And, you know, the buy low, sell high. My other philosophy of Million Street, which, by the way, that's quite a simple philosophy. That's all they say usually on those commercials. Buy now, buy low, sell high. They also say don't ever touch it. Where meaning no cash flow is going to come to you ever, and don't ever take it out because if the economy's right. down, don't take it out. If the economy's <clears throat> up, don't take it out. The number one rule of Wall Street is don't touch it. You're never going to touch it. But with projects like what you do in multifamily, Melanie and I do, there's cash flow. That's a mind bender just in and of itself. Plus, it's going up in value. I imagine that's some that and then depreciation are some of the ones that surprise people the most. I think. Well, just like you said there, like, don't touch it, but in some part in your life, you have to touch it, right? And that's the biggest part is that, sure, say you, you buy into that philosophy, but at a certain point, maybe you're retired or not, and it's time for you to, you know, to, to reap the rewards if you're in the wrong time of the cycle, right? Ideally, your portfolio that you spend all those years putting money into and just hoping really is a hope. And ideally, you're on the wrong side of the fence for the time in which you need the money. What's great about real estate is that you're buying something for which we could have 100, 200, 300 tenants that are there paying down your expenses every month, paying down your mortgage every month, and ideally exceeding that and then offering cash flow that you can take home, right? That can be something that you could use for whatever. It could be for an extra trip. It could be used to pay down your expenses so you can leave your job or work less hours or you fill in the gap of where you want to go. But real estate just does offer so many different opportunities. And when you think about it from a inflation standpoint, is it's they say real estate's a great inflation hedge. I would like to say that you know certain asset classes in real estate are better inflation heads. When you look at multifamily, ideally, the cool thing about this is we're about 5 million units short to build it this decade. So when you think about that, okay, well, we can't get units in the ground fast enough. However, with the cost of where it is, supply chains and just the, the difficulty to find labor, it's not go- we're not going to keep up. We're not going to get to that point. So it's going to make the, the assets that exist already worth more just based on the value. Great explanation. Costs, right? And so when you think about that, you say, wow, okay, well, what's next? Well, because there's not enough units here, and if you look at a home today that if you brought this home like eight months ago when rates were like 2.88 or 3%, now today it's 6% right now, you're getting about 60% of the home that you could potentially have purchased wow. just yeah. you know, six, nine, 12 months ago. And when you look at that, you say, well, there was no homes. It was such a competitive market before. So it's not like these homes have decreased in value 30 or 40% right now. So there's even less homes out there. So those people who were potential buyers that were coming in, one of the 19 other people who didn't get the house, right, that are now staying to rent longer, well, they can't afford a house today based on the house that they want to get. So either they're going to take a very discounted form of house, which you're not because there's none of those, or they're going to stay and rent longer. Well, that's going to push on the acceleration of what the rent growth is going to continue. Now, we had a lower rent growth for August. However, we still did have rent growth. We're like year on year, we're looking at about 14% of rent growth, which is just astronomical. But when you look at that, you say, where are these people going to go, right? That they're going to stay, if you have a good product, and you have a good place, you have something good that you're going to offer them, they're going to stay and stay longer because it costs them money to go and pick up and move, right? It costs them money to go out and rent. And then if they do want to get a house, they need to have a bigger down payment. They need to have a better credit check. They need to have a better job to be able to support that house. So it, it trends that rentals are going to sustain for a long way. And inflation, although it's a beast on all sides, it's also going to add value to multifamily assets. <laughs> Drop the mic. You know, so that helps un- me understand why s- passive investors reach out to us, you and us. And it makes a lot of sense because without a doubt, you said a, a fact there that I've heard a hundred times and I think it's true, about 5 million units short. So residential of any kind, multifamily or housing, there's too few for the amount of normal growth in our population, correct? So that's an economics easy way to see it. You know, this many houses for this many people. Well, they're n- we're not building as many as the people are growing. Therefore, we're falling behind. Plus, we're already behind. So when I look at multifamily deals, I'm like, this feels strong, right? Because the future bodes well for people needing a place to live. And for people being willing to pay for one that's run well and is clean. So I agree with you on all that. When we come back from a quick break, 
By the way, Hal Elrod, I hope, says hello to you here on the break. But we're going to come back and we're going to go into the crystal ball of the Yerusi Holdings. Crystal ball. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Melanie McCallan. Josh and I are just so grateful for the many investors who have already joined us at Accountable Equity. Accountable Equity is so much more than a capital group. It's really a community of accredited investors that want to learn and grow together. I just want to personally invite you, if you want to find out more about this type of investment and see if it's right for you and your family, please visit us at accountableequity.com. All right, we're back. We're back. And Mr. Yerushi, I promised the families and friends listening and all these people, what is the future look like in the economy? What is the Yerushi Holdings projections and predictions for the next two years? What do you think is going to happen? And how are you uh, making investment decisions? You know, so to say that anybody can look forward and say, I have a solution would be foolish. However, you have to look market to market, right? There's going to be weaker markets and stronger markets. And typically we look at this as if whatever they say in the news, it just happens as a blanket statement across every, right. every state, every city, every town, just exactly the same. And it's completely not true. So you want to look at the market you're in, the market you're investing in, the market you stand in today, what is the health of that market? Right. What is the overall health of the economy in your market? Because that's going to be first and foremost of importance. Right. Are people moving there? Are there jobs? Is there a strong amount of jobs continuing to grow here? Are there new employers coming in? Is there a vast amount of diversification in the employment sector? Right. If you look at that's going to continue to drive those areas of the economy. Now, of course, interest rates are going to continue to push up, right? At least in the short term. But it's a point here where they can either impact us with rates or they can impact us with just the flow, the amount of money that's in or out and print it or pull back, right? So if you look at those two points from the Fed, they're very limited on their options. So they're going to be able to push to a point. I think we're going to find ourselves that they'll push again and again a little bit because they have this arbitrary number of 2% inflation that they put out years ago, right? That they seem to want to get back. Back to whether or not that's a realistic thing, I don't know. It's a far way for us to go. However, when we come into election season, just like anything else here, we're going to have to see them pull back. We're going to have to see them to take really the foot off the gas in terms of their monetary policy that we see right now. But into that, we probably have six or 12 months of pretty uh, rampant uncertainty. So if you can go into properties that have at least good debt, that gives you a lot of options good cash flow and reserves is going to stand you on the one side where you're going to be able to make good economic decisions because it's going to put you in a good spot that when the tide changes, whether for the good or bad, you'll be able to have opportunity to make multiple choices, not just one choice that's going to push you into the decision. That's so well said. So that I think I might've picked up on a nuance there. Did you say you're able to find some properties now that have good debt? And that you can assume? Is that one of your strategies? You no. Know, so we haven't done assumptions, but there's, yeah, it's like, if you come into a job, just think anything, like you're going to come into a, build a house and the only thing you have is a screwdriver, right? You're going to be limited on your options, right? Right. So it's the same thing with banks. There's a lot of, we, we may just think there's only like one loan I can get, but of course there's bridge debt. There's agency debt, there's local banks, regional banks, credit unions, right? So you need to talk to the different banks that exist just to understand their temperament and their tolerance today in today's market. That's right. Because when you have those conversations, it opens you up to look at possibilities and how the bank's looking at it. Some banks just have a box, whether you fit or not. Some banks are loaning inside, right? And so loaning in their bank, right? So they're able to make some decisions. Some right. banks may have kind of a ton of capital back and now they're just trying to put it out, right? And say, okay, I'm going to put it out and put it out to work, right? So there's ways that banks look at opportunities here differently. And it's not just a straight line. So the more conversations you can have to understand the lending environment right now, the better you will be able to make good decisions. What I'm trying not to do is put ourselves in a position where I'm stuck in debt when that would could be that, I'm going to take on debt that's going to have a, a very big or very uh, limited way for me to get out of the loan because of prepayment penalty, whether it's the fees, it's your yield maintenance. I don't want something on the back end that's going to limit my decision making. Right. Because whether rates go up or rates go down right now, I don't want to be in a point where if rates go down, I'm stuck into a loan for three, five, seven years, and I can't get out of it because it's so cost prohibitive for me right. to exit into a better loan. So well said. Now, for those who are listening who haven't maybe delved into all of those comments, I think the things that maybe are vocabulary words we should explain is that debt is not all designed the same way. You, you brought up a point that there was some banks you talk to, especially regionals, can take a, the $10 million loan you want from them and that piece of paper they create, the promissory note, they can actually keep it at that bank. 
So if it's in Tennessee, it's in Tennessee. But the normal way a lot of bank loans happen is they sell that you get the loan from Billy Bob and then Billy Bob sells it to another partner. And so that's when it's not held on their balance sheet. And you're saying that there's more, that's probably been the normal way, the agency way, correct? But now you need to be more speaking to more banks. And I imagine that's a program. It always, because honestly, it serves in many ways that the, the you have to think about just fear and uncertainty, right? On any level. And if you are just trying to do anything right now, right? And you're going to come into a market where there's a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty, it's going to be more difficult for you to do that because you have not made that connection prior, right? So the more banks Correct. you can talk to today, the more they're going to understand you, know you, know your business plan. So if things do really take a, a dive or go down, and whether you find a good opportunity or not, it's going to be easier for you to go back to that bank that you've already now started a relationship with to talk to them about what you're doing and the opportunity you found than if you're just saying, you know, eight months from now, you're going to try and make that opportunity then. And you can think about that from anything, right? From real estate investing to raising capital, right? The more you can do today, the better it's going to put you in a position when it's the time for you to need to make a decision That's because it's going to allow people to know you and know about you, your company, your business plan. Yeah. And that's where we want to compliment you and Pili, Pili, because you guys have, like I said, been out there. You've been out there on the social media. You've been out there with seminars. You had been doing them before your current business. And I want to shift into that for a few moments because some of the people listening are actually going to jump into the world of investing at a big level. And maybe they want to join an organization like Seven Figure Multifam. So this is the type of program that I've actually been interested in these types of things, these masterminds, I believe they are, where you get education, you get community. I'm basically giving your pitch here, but I believe you're getting education, community, and support into deals. Like, here's how we're going to underwrite this. Does this make sense? Did I explain that right? And what does it look like? And what kind of commitment does it take to be part of something like seven figure multifamily? Sure. And so, and accountability too, right? That's a big part is that we always have to be accountable to ourselves, but we surround ourselves with groups and we actually have breakout groups that every week meet through accountability groups where a small group mm -hmm. of seven or eight people meet together, right? And they make themselves accountable in actual steps that they can take. And they basically are every six weeks, they re-up and then it's a new group, right? And then they have six-week goals that they go out here. Because we find that we can give you the steps, but you need to be accountable to yourself to go take those steps. So it's a year commitment here. You dive in with a group of other like-minded people that are going out there to try and crush your goals. And the cool thing is that most of the time we haven't grown up or have been surrounded by other people who have the same goals or have the same ambitions or have the same th desires that we want, right? It's people that have grown up another way and that's fine too. However, when we put ourselves in a group of people that have a like-minded goal, like-minded vision, what do you think happens? Everybody starts stepping up and leveling themselves up now because they're around the group and the commitment and they're around the team and they're around the energy that they should be within. So that's what Seven Figure Multifamily brings. It brings a group here that's tried and tested where we have done this before. This is what we've done to get to this next step to through this. So you can learn and see the path that we've run down there and then now put in play your action steps to get to your goal. And when you see this, you see people get out of the gate who just weeks before or we're doing something different or we're just on a different part, come in here, see the steps and it becomes actionable, it becomes tactical and it comes real to them. Because instead of looking at that big thing of, oh, I don't know how I'm ever gonna buy that $15 million apartment building and I just stand on the sideline, that's what you can see is this big <laughs> building. We start to say, what's step number one? With something tactical, you just start creating wins. And you start creating wins, the wins compound, the wins build up. And then the wins become massive, huge accomplishments because they get from where they want, where they were to where they want to be. And that road is what the mastermind provides. Beautiful. No, and that's the Napoleon Hill idea, right? I mean, you put yourself in the room and share these ideas and have them sharpen each other. So what does a person look like? Well, you don't have to use Billy Bob's name or Jenny's name. Sure. But what does that person, maybe the most recent person that you saw join and succeed where did they come from? Wall Street? Were they Main Street guys? Were they investors? A little bit of everything. So we, we had one who was a psychiatrist, right? And his wife had just moved out from a job she's had for a long time. And they, want, they didn't like this part where they had instability in their jobs, right? Where all of a sudden now someone makes a decision behind the door and someone's out of a job. And now that now dictates how their future goes. They wanted to take control back of their future and not be lined up to be in a place where 
all of a sudden it was somebody else who was driving their focus for their future. We have a lot who come in from another path of real estate where they find that, okay, I'm running a grind, just like we were doing back in the day, but I have to continue to do all these actual steps, right? To be able to get to my next point. I want something to be able to build wealth with, right? Because when you think about anything, you know, Forbes top 100, unless any house flippers on there, and there's a reason for that, right? And then it could be anybody coming from another point. We have, uh, you know, doctors, we have a uh, psychiatrist, as I mentioned right there, we have someone who uh, was working for the government, right? And just knew that was never going to get them to the level of success and the level of comfort that they wanted here. We have teachers, we have people who have retired, right? We have people who have just come out of the military, right? Who now we're finding that next focus. So that's probably the last 10 people or so that have come into the group. Oh, they good. come from all different walks of path, walks and ranges. And it's that where they are today, is not where they see themselves tomorrow or into the mm. future. And they don't want the uncertainty to be their life. They want to take control of where they want to go. And they know that multifamily or investing in apartment communities can provide that and offer that for them. Yeah, no, it's absolutely compelling. And your market, by the way, you guys have three little ones. I should have said that at the beginning. And I have something that I got to share that the, the names are beautiful, Luke, Lily, and Leo. Yeah. And there must be a reason you used L's for all of them. Was there a reason they're all starting with the letter L, Luke, Lily, and Leo? Uh, I think it just started in that route. I think exactly. it actually fell down that we had the girl's name before we had the first boy's name. It went boy, girl, boy. So we had Lily, Lily, Joy before we have anything else. And so once we had Lily, we said, okay, let's go back and ended up with an L for Luke. And then when the girl, we had uh, the girl coming, we already had Lily baked in. So by that time, you can't have the third kid just go off on his own. Get, you, get can't, you can't, you can't. My yeah, wife and I, we agree a hundred percent. You know, I'm that yeah. famous guy with the 10 kids and all the ladies are M's and all the dudes are C's. So there you go. Just works out. Once you get started, you got to finish that. That That's that'll exactly be great. Right. So uh, Jason, why don't we ask, where's the best way for us to follow up with you and maybe learn from you more? Sure. Because you're, you bring the heat. As a matter of fact, you bring tons of energy. Even the, the tempo of this show is like on a double. It's on a double. Don't, you're not able to bump it up a few points because it's already too fast. I, I listen to everything on 2X. Or like Joe Rogan, you get up to 3X. So that's what, that's like my piece in my mind right here. So my goal was that I continue on my pace yeah, good. and listen to me in 2X because I'm like 1X is going to be a 2X. But <laughs> I think about that in the same part. There's, there's a good lesson in that, right? If you continue to max your days and not find excuses for not having the time and making the most of the time you have, you know, it's 15 minutes, I guarantee 15 minutes for 365 days a year targeted at what you want to do is going to put you light years ahead of everybody else who's waiting for that right moment or for those five hours so they can get back to doing something they think they need to do, right? And that's the lesson in any part. Well said. And what's the best way to follow up with you? Sure. Uh, you can go over to Yerusi Holdings, Y-A-R-U-S-I Holdings.com. You can find out everything about our company, what we do, what we offer, the mastermind investing with us. And I'm Jason Yerusi across all social profiles. So you can find me there. You're, you're incredible. I cannot wait to have you back on in the future. It's a joy to know you, buddy. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank you.